Hi, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer for Reason TV, and I'm here at the University of Southern California with journalism professor Robert Hernandez. Robert, thanks for talking to us today. Thanks for having me. So next semester, you are incorporating Google Glass into your curriculum. Can you talk about what you plan to do with this? Is it more for consumer side that you're building a new platform for Google Glass or using Google Glass in terms of storytelling techniques? What I'm interested in is the storytelling uh, part of it. So we want to create content and experiences for those who are wearing glass. Um, to try to get, you know, journalism and information in a different way. So taking advantage of Glass's features, for better or for worse, it knows where you are, uh, where you are, it knows what you're looking at, and it has the power of the internet, right? Um, all kind of coming together with a screen there. Um, what type of stories uh, can we tell? How can we optimize our existing news content? My end goal uh, is augmented reality, AR storytelling. This is technology that's emerging. And Glass is a really great wearable platform that is very early, but has a lot of potential to do that. It's got a touchable surface here, and once I tap it, I can wake it up, or I can nod my head to wake it up. And if you can see, the light turns on. That indicates that uh, it's on, and that's a way to let people know that I could be recording, things like that. You actually see what I'm seeing. It's transparent. You pointed out that you can see when it's recording, so do yeah. you think that all the privacy and recording consent concerns are unwarranted? I think one of the things that has happened, which is understandable, is um, a lot of people are projecting things onto glass. They don't know, they haven't played with it, they, some people think it's full immersion. These are fantastic while driving. I have a horrible sense of direction, so the GPS in the corner tells me where to go. It's a lot safer than unlocking my phone, going at the map, looking for the map. The other thing is, I'm actually happy that they're having a conversation about privacy. Would we have had this conversation before Snowden in the NSA? Would we have had this conversation? I don't know. Um, but what it's doing is doing a couple things. It's raising the awareness that the truth is we don't have privacy. And in public places, there are all these cameras recording us all the time. So if this is going to help you realize and, and be aware and, and be a more engaged citizen, great. Um, but is this going to spy on people? Um, this worked on spying on people too. This is so early that if people are freaking out about it, uh, proactively banning it from restaurants. You don't want me to be recording you in inappropriate times. That's that social dynamic that we're dealing with. Um, but the difference is this is on my face, right? And you can see that it's on. So your behavior currently will change when I put that on. That's for a reporter. I have to compensate for that, just like that it's different when someone brings right. out a camera or a microphone or a notepad. And on that note, journalism takes different forms depending on the platform. You know, print journalists have to think very differently than video. Do you think that Glass is just going to be the next iteration of, you know, mobile journalism, or is it going to be something completely different? I do believe, and this sounds crazy talk, but I do believe that our mobile phones are going to be outdated uh, and they're going to be replaced with wearables. How soon? I don't know. But it just makes logical sense in the next evolutionary step. Um, I also think glass is going to look like the Zach Morris phone or the Gordon Gecko phone, that old brick. Glass, which looks sci-fi and dorky at the same time, is going to look ridiculous a couple years down the road. The point of this class is I want to be proactive about shaping that type of story. Right. So if I know eventually mobile phones are not going to be in my back pocket, but they're going to be on me all the time, whether it's in my face or the joke that we say, the chip in the brain, let's just assume we're going to live in the future because we kind of do have some examples of that. And I believe that journalism is going to be around, maybe not the newspaper, but the content in the newspaper is going to be around. Then why don't I proactively try to define what that article looks like? So I want to look at what does NPR look like, sound like, um, feel like in this platform? What does long form look like? What does a tweet, uh, what's that optimized experience for that? Um, is this going to be a brand new platform that we have to customize our content to? That doesn't necessarily scale, and really at this time we want to take it slow, but I would want to uh, experiment and, and figure that out. Take a picture. AR storytelling is, like I said, is my end goal, and one of the factors to be AR is full immersion. Not like VR, full immersion that everything is made up, but AR, augmented reality, is I define it as real life enhanced by digital. Um, and so glass has a small screen in the upper corner. It's as if you're holding your phone out at arm's length. That's how much real estate it takes up, right? It's not a full immersion type of thing. So with that small screen, I'm trying to think of what are the type of stories I can tell that are useful and appropriate to interrupt your life 
um, and give you bite-sized information. As uh, the glasses become more common with consumers, um, it, it might facilitate citizen journalism. Sure. Do you think that that will take over? Should journalists like myself be scared for our jobs? That's the same thing when phones came out and when camcorders came out. I'm sure, actually I'm not sure about the camcorders. It's just more point of views, more data, more information being collected. And I think a journalist's job is to not only create that content, but also navigate through that stuff. Um, to point out and amplify the voices that need to be amplified and those that are spreading misinformation. So I saw one person say that glass is the next Gutenberg printing press. That's ridiculous. <laughs> or it's going to replace broadcast equipment. I don't foresee that anytime soon. I mean, um, it does have really good quality, but my body is not a tripod. And when I'm talking to you, if we were going to look at the POV shot, it moves around. You've referred to yourself as the mad scientist of journalism. That's right. I've always nerded out over technology since I've gotten into it. And um, I'm always tinkering and messing with tech. Glass is just the latest augmented reality, social media, um, code, just in general. I, I'm a journalist first and a technologist second, but I hijack technology for journalism. And someone, whether I'm getting paid for it at the university or elsewhere, I'm always tinkering and trying to figure out how can I, how can I use this. So when I got Foursquare, I thought about how can I use this for journalism. I know I can, how to use it as a civilian, but as a journalist I use it completely different. Twitter, same thing. Instagram, Vine, I'm trying to think of how can I hack it for journalism. Well, that was really fun. Thank cool. you again for having us. Thanks for having me. For Reason TV, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer.